Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where it's a cold winter's morning here in Cornwall and well I'm full of cold but I wanted to make this video because it's an important one in the timeline of the the Sierra Cosworth restoration but before we get to that I want to say thanks once again I did say it in my last video but thanks once again for the overwhelming support and following that's out there at the moment for my Sierra Cosworth restoration it really has been overwhelming the subscribers the likes the comments all the comments have been great the advice the feedback the opinions even some of the criticism has been really good to read and I've tried to get back to everyone so thanks so much for that and keep it coming anyway what am I doing today? Well, as I say, it is early. The car itself, you'll have seen in the last video, was at the fabrication shop where they were welding in new inner centre and outer seals and a little bit of work to the floor pan and the transmission tunnel, making the car nice and rigid. So that work's been done and the car's been moved back to MK Body Shop where they've put it on a spit, a jig. So the car at the moment is rotating 360 degrees horizontally on the jig, so I had to go and see it. What they've been doing for the last week is loads of work on the underside of the car, patching some small little holes, probably a few more than I initially thought, doing some work on the rear chassis legs, jacking points, all of that, so I'll show you in a moment. So let's go take a look at this, and throughout this video, let's touch on other points of the restoration, so do stay tuned. and keep subscribing, keep liking, and keep leaving me comments. So good to read. Thanks very much, let's go. Oh my God, check it out. Doesn't it look spectacular? It's like an Airfix model, but in real life size. I can't believe it. I'd never expected to go this far with this car, but I have, and I'm so glad that I have. And the team here at MK Body Shop have done a brilliant job. This car is absolutely rock solid. So what's been done? Well, the first thing to say is here, the front of the car, it wasn't too bad. We've had new jacking points put on, supplied by Express Steel Panels, really good. So they were put on the car, a bit crusty in behind again, so we sorted that out. But that really resolved all the issues with the front of the car. It's a bit of an oil leak with the car. It took a while for the team, I think, to get it off the car, all the oil. But this bit of it, I think, preserved to a degree by the oil. But those of you that said, don't buy a Ford from Scotland because it's bound to be rusty underneath, well, you were half right. And this is the half that you were right on because as we go back through the car, yeah, there have been some issues. There were some pretty dodgy patches on the rear chassis legs. I'll show you a couple of photos now. So instead of repatching them or repairing them, we actually bought new panels. So this piece here on the offside of the car, that is a new piece that's been put on by the team. But here on the near side of the car, the passenger side of the car, this whole chassis leg from here right the way through is brand new, giving the car some real strength, some real rigidity. We also found some holes in the boot floor and a few other places, so they have also been repaired. In fact, what I think I'll do, because there's been loads of photos and videos of it, is I'll flick now to a montage of all the work that's done on the underside of this car.
The work that's gone into this is quite incredible. And stood here now, well, it's really hard to believe that this, in just a couple of months' time, is going to be a running, driving car. There's a lot to be done from here on in. I think the next stage for the team here at MK is to start build up all the running gear and get this car back on some wheels and get it rolling again. Then attention turns to painting the top of the car. It's a pretty good shell, so I'm not expecting too many nasty surprises. I think we've had all of those here on the underside of the car. But I'm so pleased with it. I mean, this is a car that's going to last, what, another 30 years and probably beyond. It really has been done so, so well. So pleased with it. Right, what else did we do on the restoration? Well, it's been two months since I made that bit of this video. The thing with restoring cars is you get these concentrated periods where lot seems to happen. And then you have longer kind of barren periods where very little progress is made. I said in my last video that at that time, my Sierra Cosworth was spread across 12 locations right across the UK. And well, whether or not this car is going to come back together from all of those locations, who knows? Or if I'm going to have to go and buy some missing parts, we're going to find all of that out together as the restoration of my car and this series of videos continues. For now, though, some parts have returned. The turbo is an example. That's come back from Turbo Technics fully rebuilt and with hybrid internals. Both the front and rear differentials are back from Colebrook Engineering, having been fully refurbished, which includes a much needed clean. The rocker cover, which had the hole that fed the oil breather welded, has been painted. And well, we're waiting now for the paint to fully cure before we mill the top of it to give it that OEM look. As you know, I'm putting my Sierra Sapphire back on those original lattice alloy wheels. So I listed and I successfully sold those 17 inch soft line alloy wheels to Stephen, who's bought them to put on his cracking Ford Escort Series 2 RS Turbo. Here, take a look at this picture. It looks absolutely fantastic. They're lovely wheels. I also sold that oil breather for 40 quid to a friend of mine called Mick, who I know through the XR Owners Club. Now Mick's also restoring a Sierra Sapphire Cosworth. And I'm so looking forward to getting Mick's car and my car together for the first time at a show this year. I've also bought quite a few parts. Sierra's RS have supplied two engine mounts, a new fuel filler cap seal, two Sierra Sapphire boot lids, rear brake plates, front ABS sensors and four wheel bearings. I bought some Powerflex Heritage bushes at the Classic Car Show at the NEC from Burton Power. I benefited there from the show discount, thanks very much. And Burton Power have also supplied my new clutch assembly for the Sierra. My bulkhead panel was really rough and near impossible to repair, but it was also near impossible to find a replacement. However, Neil, a friend of mine from the XR Owners Club, had one in his garage and kindly sold it to me. What a lifesaver. Look at the difference. I also sourced an original dump valve from eBay to replace the loud and pink one that came with the car. But I think I'll save the engine updates for you all for a future video because it really is a feature on its own, well worth staying tuned for. Now, with the parts that came off the car, I've been kind of methodically working through them, cleaning them, refurbishing them, and well, really tidying them up, readying them to go back on the car. Right, it's time to look at the headlights, and these are the two headlights that came off the Sierra Cosworth. The thing is, they're different. Now, I think that my Sierra Cosworth, well, it has had some work done to that near side front wing, that passenger side front wing. We're starting to see signs of it as we've taken the car apart. It's been done well, but there's still been some work to that side. And one indicator is certainly the fact that we've got different headlights. The driver's side, the off side of the car, well, you'll see that it is labeled Corello there on the front lens and the label on the back is correct. But the passenger side, again, a Corello light, but with the code 813 after the logo there on the lens and a different label on the back. So the headlights are definitely different and we cannot have them going back onto the Cosworth. And it's this passenger headlight that needs to be changed. Now, fortunately, I've got another set of headlights. I've had them for a long time and I've got a Corello passenger side headlight, which is correct. It's a bit rattly, so I need to do a bit of work on this one. And my intention, well, on both headlights really, is to strip them down, give them a good clean up and get them both ready to go back onto the car with matching headlights. So here we go.
And well, here it is, all done. I've put the fixing back on, I've rebuilt the headlight, no more rattles, and I think it's looking great with the correct Corella lens and the correct sticker. So that's the near side one done, just got to do the offside one, which is just out of shot here. You can see I've pretty much cannibalized the old light. I will put it back together because it's always useful to have a spare. So just now I've got to go and do the driver's side one. I'll show you a picture of them both done now. Aren't they looking great? Ready to go back onto the car. And of course, I've also got my two front fog lamps, which I got also from the garage. I've had them for a while as well. So headlights done. Stop, stop, stop. Before you all take to the comments, I know what I've done wrong. So here are my two beautifully refurbished headlights. This one originally from the car and this one made up of parts, some that I already had and some that have come from the Sierra Cosworth. And well, let's play spot the difference. So the one from the original car has this fitting and the one that I've built for the car has a different fitting, I imagine. This is to do with the fact that the Sierra Cosworth has a very different grille to the normal car. So I've now got to do this one again. I've got one, here it is, look, that's got the right fitting. So I'll take this one apart again and make it good. But it's okay, it's all learning, I haven't done this before. Um, I'm just glad I realized before they went out onto the car. So I won't film it, fast forward to a quick picture of the headlights done, there you go. With the wheels now back having been completely refurbished and wrapped in lovely new Toyo Proxy tyres, and with all of the parts required to rebuild the underside of the car having been powder coated or refurbished or bought new, well the MK Body Shop team were ready to start to reassemble that underside of the car. And I'm pleased to say it went together really nicely. Here, take a look. And with that, the car was back on its wheels. Well, a spare set of wheels that I had because I'm gonna to wait to put those refurbished, lovely fresh wheels on the car once most of the work is done. Next, the body, the doors, the boot lid, the bonnet were all repaired, prepared and painted. The bottoms of those front wings were sorted. You recall if you've seen the previous videos that one new wing was already supplied with the car. So I purchased another and Matt at MK Body Shop used the bottoms of the new wings in order to preserve the original Ford wings on the car and he did an excellent job. A bit of filler and a decent rub down came next. Then the car went into primer whilst the other parts were prepared including the bonnet which you'll remember had some rust bubbling underneath the paint. So for good measure, the bonnet received an e-proxy layer to really prevent the same happening again. Then the engine bay was given a fresh coat of paint. And finally, Sam gave the car itself and all of the panels a fresh coat of that lovely moon dust silver.
Wow, what a transformation. And with Ty taking the time to really flatten and polish that moon dust silver paint, well, the finish is absolutely fantastic. The paint looks lovely and deep. I'm so, so pleased with it. So we left the car for a few days just to allow that paint to cure a bit more before the MK Body Shop team started to rebuild the shell of the car back up using the original parts and some new parts. The new bulkhead panel was fitted and because the old engine bay sound installation had, well, was really knackered, with the guidance from the guys at Sierra's R Us, I managed to purchase some adhesive six millimeter insulation material and it was fitted to the car. It looks really good. Here, check this picture out. The car had come back together really well. A big thanks to the team there at MK Body Shop. And then, after six months, the day finally arrived. It's early on a Monday morning and well, the weather is pretty strange. It's foggy one minute and it's sunny the next, but that's not what's important. You'll see that I'm wearing the Cosworth t-shirt today and that's because it's an important day. Today, the Sierra Cosworth shell is leaving MK Body Shop and it's going to Tour Point MOT where it's going to be reunited with the engine, which arrived last week from Alvin Powell Motorsport. I'm so excited. So I'm off over to MK just to help Matt load the car onto the transporter and then we'll follow it back to Tour Point MOT. I can't wait to get these two back together and hopefully in about a week's time, I should have a running car. Wow, that's been a long time coming. Let's see how today plays out. Wow, it looks absolutely incredible on the back of the transporter there. It's looking so pretty back together. Guy, the moments like this remind you why you do this, because believe me, there are points where you lose kind of the enthusiasm, the motivation, the will to live on this type of stuff. But right now was a big day and a big moment. It was quite nice actually, as the car was put up on the transporter, the, all the guys from MK came out to see the car off and a few people from the surrounding business units because, well, the Sierra's been at MK for, well, several months now, five or six months, I suppose. Now, the car does have to go back to the body shop at some point once the engine's back in because we need to refit the spoiler. It's not on the car at the moment. And a few other things like the jacking point covers aren't on the car at the moment. And we've still got to do a little bit with the doors, but the car is, 95% together and looking brilliant. I'm following it home now and well, I just, I can't take my eyes off it. Now, we're off now to Torpoint MOT, who have the engine, as I've already said. They're gonna be putting that back together, so I'll show you some footage of that, either in this video or in the next one. And, well, we should have, as I said earlier, we should have a running car in sort of seven to 10 days time. And I cannot wait to take that car out on the road for the first time, fully restored. I really, really am looking forward to it. I think Simply Ford at Bewley is in about a month's time. I wonder if it can be ready to attend Simply Ford. I'd really like to take it to that. We'll see. There's bound to be some hiccups, bound to be some challenges, some unforeseen issue or a part that I can't find. But maybe, just maybe, it'll be okay. Let's find out together. For now though, following it back to Tour Point MOT to get the engine re-put back into my Sierra Cosworth. Hooray! Right, as I said earlier, I'm gonna keep this video focused on the body of the car, on the shell of the car, and I'm gonna do a whole other feature on the engine, which believe me, is really quite interesting, so do stay tuned for that. I hope that you've enjoyed this installment of my Sierra Sapphire Cosworth restoration. One thing's for sure, with the body of the car and the engine now in the same place, well, things should progress at pace. So you can expect a video very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching. 
please do leave me a comment with your thoughts. I love to hear from you. Um, your thoughts on the Sierra Cosworth or anything at all, really. I love to read them. Uh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel. It really helps and it means that you can follow the restoration of the Cosworth and all of my other cars. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you again on the next one. Bye for now. Bye-bye.